Hey, welcome to another episode of Legion Elite Motorsports. I'm your host, Isaiah, and today we're going to continue to dive back in. But just to give you a hint, uh, the intake manifold is on permanently. Thank goodness. All right, so let's dive into it. Okay, so I got this doohickey to work. Um, injectors are in and everything. I have to cut the access off, which is no big deal. I'll leave a good amount of extra so it doesn't mess anything up. And um, next, what we also have to do is um, take off the old uh, thermostat housing, the top piece, and get that on there, including the thermostat. So that's uh, 212 millimeters from the original um, housing and pop that in there. So that'll definitely be the easier part. So let's get to that. Okay, so we have the steering box here and over here we have a leak this is actually a new line and it was installed with the uh, intake manifold in there so tightening it all the way was probably the issue so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this line off check it to make sure it's not cracked and then after that I'm gonna tighten it down properly to make sure um, both of these lines are ready to go. So there's that. And then I'm going to plug up some of these uh, water lines. And that should be it, actually. I'll probably plug this one up also and maybe use that one there. Oh. Probably not. Uh, I'll use one of these and plug one of these. So that's long story short. And um, I believe, I'm gonna double check, but I believe that's gonna be it for underneath the intake manifold. And soon we'll be putting the intake manifold on and getting a uh, fuel pressure test. That is my next big obstacle to make sure the uh, fuel pressure is up to par with no leaks. And also we're gonna replace this line to a 3 8 So we're gonna put a uh, clamp on this, um, use a bigger line. This is the return line. This is going to go to the fuel pressure regulator and the feed, which is this guy, is probably going to get cut and um, plugged into the fuel rail on the back side. So hopefully we have enough uh, uh, line. If we don't, I will have to add to this one. And that covers our fuel feed and return. And of course we're gonna slap on the uh, water hose there. We're going to tuck everything away nice and neatly. And then hopefully uh, we won't have any more trials and tribulations with this intake manifold. So, so hopefully if everything goes well, we'll be installing this permanently. Um, we still have to shave off some of this area. Same thing for the back. Um, all of the tubes are tight. So, yep, I'm gonna cross the fingers and hope for the best. We got a fitting coming for this one. We also finished the uh, fuel pressure regulator. So all of the fittings are on and tight. These fittings are 3 8 and uh, it comes with 6 AN, which is pretty decent. And then, um, yeah, we're going to install all of this, mount it, and we should be good to go. Alrighty, 
more trial and tribulation with said intake manifold. So we got the uh, injectors in there. Hopefully they don't leak. Uh, once we put some pressure on there, we'll find out. Also, I got the thermostat housing on there and I'm pretty sure everyone can see the next issue. The original fitting obviously wouldn't fit for uh, running into thermostat housing. Now I have this issue, which I'm debating on cutting a little bit of skin off of this guy, just so you can slide the hose on and the clamp, or um, the extreme, which would be cutting this whole piece off, turning it ever so slightly, and uh, re-welding it. So uh, that's the other dilemma. Next, we are going to have the gasket and TPS install right now. So we're definitely going to install this. Then we're going to do another test fit. Once this test fit is complete, uh, might have it uh, put in there permanently, depending. But before we jump on this intake manifold, we have to repair some things beneath it. Pretty simple. If it seals, it seals. So we're going to install this gasket and um, go to the hardware store again and grab some screws for the TPS. Pop that in. And yep, we'll be back. Wiring harness and uh, this is a Mustang TPS more or less um, Ford through this design through many cars Lincoln's uh, Lincoln town cars you name it uh, 4.6 v8 Has this TPS most likely So um, This is the kit Doesn't seem to have a part number that's okay but um, yeah, and then I'm going to show you guys a wiring diagram for this one. And uh, once this is all buttoned up over here, we can go ahead and wire this into the ECU. All right, so that's that. Before we install the TPS and such, I went ahead and unthreaded this one cut off this one and everything so this is going to get welded shut and same deal for this one so now we have our TPS now this is a replacement unit you can get at AutoZone or what have you so it goes on like this but now I have to get the screws because it did not come with it. So that's that. Okay, we are back. So we have the TPS on, that is working. Um, we don't have the throttle uh, body gasket on there yet, um, mainly because we're gonna be taking this off to weld this uh, item up and the lower item. Um, the fuel rail is pretty much complete um, with the uh, reducer here. Um, it shouldn't get too much in the way, but if it does, I'll probably just uh, clean that corner up just to slide it down just a little bit further. Um, we have a thermostat in there, including the gasket on this item. Um, we got that piece over there. That's set up and ready to go. And we cut the studs on this here. Um, yeah, it's definitely coming along. Last couple of things I have to do is uh, grind this down in this area and a little bit on the plenum so it clears uh, for installing and removing. And that should be it, actually. 
so um yeah we'll take it from there and should be good okay so we did a little cleanup and modification so this is the return line so we removed the original and upgraded it to three eighths of an inch and that goes to the fuel pressure regulator that is not the permanent uh spot for it but i gave it a lot of uh room just in case he wants to build a bracket or something to hold it that'd be cool also we won't need this so we could possibly shorten the line and pop it over there. But anyway, then this is the original feed line. It was cut, this fitting was added in there, and um, we're gonna get more hose to go to this piece over here. And this will be the feed line from the back of the rail. So that goes to the piece we have uh, fitted there. Then the return will be that guy right there. And we'll have that uh, put in a uh, position where it's not in the way of the throttle cable. And we'll kind of take it from there. Um, we plug the line. We have extra line for this guy going to the brake booster. So, yeah, everything is coming together, slowly but surely. Okay, so, I'm going to take a look at this line here. Looks pretty good so far. I'm going to bend this just a little bit. And then I'm going to look under here to see what she's looking like and to make sure she's... Uh, mating to the surface properly and then we're going to do the same thing with this line here and take it from there oh sorry pardon the interruption in our regular scheduled program but this is a product update so this is our updated replacement tank that is a little bit more easy on installation. You don't have to dent the spare tire area at all. So let's look at some of the uh, key features. All right, so here we have the feed, return, service port, vent, Um, gas line vent uh, when you're filling it up it has a vent so it doesn't overflow and spew gas in your face so we have that including the feed line for the uh, gas tank and it is a direct bolt-in all right so this is the same price there'll be no difference in price this is uh, $500 plus shipping preferred pickup to save, uh, you know, cost of uh, shipping. So, um, with this being a direct bolt-in, the tabs may need, you know, subtle adjustments. It shouldn't, but it may. So, this is the uh, setup. And you have to purchase your own fittings. And uh, of course, they come out and go this way. And same deal with the vent. You want to get a 90 degree to come out this way. And all your accessories, including your pump, you can actually mount your pump under here. And um, I always recommend running a filter. So you could do a filter here, pump over here, and then back to the original lines, which is on the fuel neck side. So this has uh, all of the options. So yep, just wanted to give you guys an update. And of course, still has the fuel leveling sensor there. All it requires is ground and signal. And you have a full replacement tank. 
So now that we have most of this stuff complete, which is including getting these items welded, so that's welded on both sides, top and bottom. Um, also, uh, we're going to do the uh, wiring for this plug. So stay tuned, I'm gonna pop up a little diagram on the screen and we're going to show the diagram for the computer. So you're matching both wire sets. So um, let's say, for instance, um, power ground signal, we're going to follow the same thing on our Microtech. On our TPS wires here, we're gonna follow the same exact code. Okay, so we are using the variable resistor type forward, so on and so forth. Blue wire supplies the five volts and gray wire sends the signal and the brown wire is ground. So that's pretty simple and straightforward. So we're going to connect it just like that. Okay, and all of our wires are connected. Now granted, uh, these are all white, but it still runs the same operation. So you can see right here, it gives you the info on the actual wire also. And this is if you have a new wiring harness. So um, these are connected. Um, soldered and heat shrink. So this is ready to plug in also. Okay, so test fit. Everything's fitting a lot better ever since uh, the grinding and stuff has taken place. So that is good. Um, What we're going to have to do, though is we're gonna have to take this TPS and turn it the other way because it's laying on wires. So that's definitely not gonna work. All right, so now that we have the TPS plugged in, what I'm going to do, because uh, this manifold is not coming back out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab the fuel line that goes to this, which is in the back, and it's all the way down there. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, I'm gonna grab that fuel line and I'm basically going to connect that. That's gonna be permanent. I'm gonna get some more line for this. I'm gonna start hooking up the vacuum and getting my T-pipes put in there for all of the vacuum sources needed. And that should be it for now. I am happy and glad to say that this intake manifold is complete and I am not taking it out again. Okay. So, um, of course, we're going to address this little kink issue. That's the least of my worries. Um, we have all of the vacuums hooked up uh, to the fuel pressure regulator, the distributor, going to the intake manifold. We have the computer hooked up, including the air conditioning vacuum. That goes all the way over here. So everything is hooked up. I have this to connect for the brake booster. This piece, I'm gonna actually get a new one and connect it to this guy so we won't be running the plug. This has a one-way valve in it, so that's not a big issue. Um, injectors are on and tight, everything is tight. Uh, intake manifold is on and tight. Um, I'm going to straighten up these wires as soon as that time comes. But until then, before I head to the store, I'm going to take and connect the uh, vacuum to the brake booster there. 
and then heading off to the store. So she is 40% ready to start, <laughs> to say the least. But um, she's almost there. And there you have it. The brake booster is getting ample amount of vacuum. So I'm going to take this off um, and connect that to the dead plug over there. And I'm going to connect the O2 sensor. This O2 sensor is a factory replacement, but since uh, the computer isn't gonna be using it anymore, I figured I might as well uh, steal the connector and have it a plug and play system um, just so I can get some sort of a wideband reading from the computer while I'm tuning this. So uh, we're gonna hop on that next and yeah, we'll be back. Okay, so we have the O2 sensor running this way. Let me step over here so we can see what's going on. All right, and here's the factory plug here. And I took that off and connected it to our O2 wire, which is this guy. There we go, oxygen sensor. So that's gonna work perfectly um, because this is a, a single wire O2 sensor. It's actually going to uh, wait till it heats up then once it heats up, it's gonna read properly. Now, uh, once you get a wideband O2 sensor, the wideband O2 sensor has an output wire and this single wire goes to that output wire. But since we don't have that yet, we're gonna go off of this style O2 sensor. All right, so that is done. I'm gonna plug it in and it's all finished. Okay, so we got a lot more done um, as far as the fuel stuff is concerned, so that is connected currently. Um, you know, so the fuel stuff is complete, at least a complete continuous loop. The PCV valve goes to there, which the arrow is pointing towards vacuum. This has a one-way valve. That has a one-way valve, so no issue there. Then, um... Technically, I can prime the uh, fuel system to check for leaks, but we haven't gotten that far yet. So, another thing I did was I connected the positive terminal and um, the other wire that was connected to the positive terminal has been removed. This is the ignition switch wire. So as soon as you turn the ignition switch on, um, this gets constant power, even when you start or anything. So um, it was this wire and a blue wire, which is this guy here, that was originally connected to it. So I connected them together as if uh, everything was back to normal and everything. Um, so if uh, any accessories needed the positive side of the terminal to get the consistent power, it is still connected. Next. The negative side, the negative side is the pulsing side. So that means that it receives a on off signal. So these wires, every single one of them that's on there, you can either leave them be, or you can connect them to the uh, RPM output of the computer, which let me see. Yep, here we go, ignition output gray, blue. So all of the negative wires that go to the negative side of the coil go to the ignition output of the computer, not the MSD. So that goes to the computer. And we're going to put those items together on this wire and connect the ground, which is this one here, to that spot. And that should be it. Okay, so that wire has been heated and heat shrunk and uh, soldered. So that's all done. That's the way the coil is supposed to be there. And 
let me hook up the throttle cable real quick and yeah, that should be it. Okay, and the throttle pedal is on there, just like so. That was uh, actually pretty simple. And I locked the throttle cable with uh, no slack, so we're looking good. And yes, lots and lots of progress. Loving it. And thank you for watching today's episode. I hope you found it very helpful. Um, that is the mission and uh very useful you know make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh you know hit that bell icon so you can get updated notifications and i will see you next episode